Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm trying to get more content out uh, and if you click that bell notification button, then you know whenever I have. I'm doing my best to operate to a schedule, which is over the weekend, I can't be too specific, sorry, and then 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. Doing my best, was unwell the other week and completely forgot to Thursday morning, I hadn't just clicked on publish. Anyway, today um, I've actually done quite a bit of research for this. Uh, what I thought I would do is talk you through some of the most popular Hermes leathers um, and particularly those ones that I actually own. So we've got quite a bit of eye candy here for you that I will show you up close as well so you can see you know exactly what they look like so i'll tell you about my experience of them and what they, show you what they look like um, and basically the information from this is going to be drawn from personal experience the hermes website themselves and also some other bits of information that i, I gleaned from google from reputable handbag sites so I'm just going to go down in the order. I've got my iPad here for notes because there's quite a lot that I wrote and some stuff is is quite factual so I didn't want to get it wrong so we're just going to go down in the order that I've got these in so it may not be the most popular. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Country Cowhide um, and this was actually developed specifically for the Garden Party bag. So if you don't know the Garden Party bag comes in all leather versions, in canvas and leather versions, and in two sizes, which is size 30 and the size 36, which denotes in centimetres the length of the bags. Anyway, it was designed for those in mind, and the, the name of Country actually was inspired by the bag itself, because it has like a really sporty, relaxed quality to it. And the leather first appeared in 2012. So I have an example here in, and again I'll probably pronounce this wrong, but Rouge H, Rouge Ash. I'm filming in natural daylight. It's coming out a bit pinker on camera than it really is. I don't know if it's worse if I go closer or not, but it's a real, it's got a real, in, in the flesh, it's got more of a brown undertone to it. It's a really lovely colour. It's what I think is a being such a classic Hermes colour to be honest. But anyway, this is my garden party with a little twilly on and this is country cowhide leather and mine is in the size 36 and it has a, a material lining, no feet or anything. Anyway, so the leather itself, and of course my iPad switched itself off. So the appearance of the leather is, it's got a satiny irregular printed grain um, and it's actually, like I say, it's, it's, it's a printed grain, um, it's, you know, it's not been drummed, so it's, it's actually printed, which I didn't realise until I was looking up, and that information was from the Hermes website as well, so yeah, guaranteed to be accurate. Um, in terms of the features, it's, it's fairly firm, um, it maintains its hold, so this is made from a female calf leather. Um, yeah, and like I said, I didn't realise that it wasn't drummed before. So yeah, so it does hold its shape really well. It is durable, it's not too heavy. It's a really good leather. I can see absolutely why they made it for this bag. So that is Country Cowhide. I'll show you, try and show you up close so you can see this even grain there. So yeah, it's got a, I'd say it's fairly matte leather. You can see some shine, but it's, I'd say when you look at it, like flat on, it's a fairly matte finish. So that's that. So next I'm gonna get another big bag, and I'm gonna to talk to you about one of the most popular leathers, Epsom. And we see Epsom everywhere. Like I say, the country, pretty much on the, garden party, you, I've not seen it anywhere on anything else. Epsom, everywhere. So this is my Birkin 35 in Rouge Cassac. And I'm trying to show you, there you go. There you can see a close up of the leather. 
Now, Epsom, so it's really hard to do this, I really need a table. Um, so it's print, again, a bit like the country, this is a printed leather as well. The name originates from a, a town that I know very well actually, a town in the southeast of England called Epsom. And it, yeah, so it's got this fine, and it's a finer grain as you could see than the country. So it's a regular grain and that is from machine printing. So it's basically heat stamping, very much like the Prada Saffiano leather, that's the closest to it. Um, and this first appeared in collections in 2004, so longer ago than the country. Um, it's quite a glossy grain, it keeps its shape, it's scratch resistant. Now, depending on the research I did, some people said it won't ever get scratches. That's not true. And um, I know Personal Fleek has spoken about this as well in the past. Um, it can get scratches because there's less of a give to the leather. It absolutely can get a scratch, but it's not, it's not, I mean, you can run your nails over like this, nothing. It's, it's not easily scratched or anything like that. Um, it's great, you know, I, I'm more confident taking this out uh, in the rain as well. Obviously, I don't want to get any of my bags wet, especially not my immense bags, but, you yeah, know, the country leather, Epsom leather, I'm much happier to, if they get a little bit wet by accident and then dry them off afterwards, I'm much happier doing that than some of the other leathers that I'm going to talk about. Um, the leather itself is lightweight, it holds its structure, um, it's easy to clean. Um, what can happen over time is it will keep its, its shape, but the grain can fade in areas that are exposed to a lot of contact or rubbing. Um, so typically you see this leather on the Celia Kelly, the Celia Birkin, um, but also, as you can tell, the regular Birkin as well, and it is great for the 35 Birkin. Whilst I like the slouchy look of a larger Birkin, from a weight perspective, this really does help keep the weight down, particularly by the time you put stuff in it. So, really love it from that perspective. Um, I've seen it on Arans, on belts, SLGs. Um, another bag it's very, very popular on is the Constance. Um, and also agenda covers. I've got some other items to show you as well. So like I say, this is Epsom Rouge Cassac. But I've also got this agenda, which is in Epsom. And you can see we've got Trench, Etan, and Rose. I've gone up my head. Um, God, sorry. It's completely falling out of my head, but you can see there, try and get the texture. So that's it in some more neutral colours. And then I've also got a, because um, one of the, I uh, mentioned SLGs, one of the SLGs um, is the Calvi card holder. Now mine is a customisable one, which comes in either Epsom or Swift. And this is in Rouge Ash again. So you can see there, you can see that texture and that printing and how sort of small it is and even. Now, you also with the Hermes leathers, the colours come out differently depending on the different leathers. So these are both Rouge Ash. And you can see they're, they're similar, but they are slightly different. Not enough that you wouldn't think it was the same colour, but you can tell that they're different, certainly. And you can see there the difference in grain size as well from the country versus the Epsom. So that is Epsom leather. Right, so next we are going to talk about one of the other really, really popular leathers, Togo. And I've got a couple of examples here, some great bags. We have my first ever Hermes bag here, my Birkin 30 in Rose Poop Togo. I'll show you there. You can see the leather. And I also have probably my favourite bag ever. My Gris Etan Ritorne Kelly 28. And that's the Togo on this one. So, features of Togo. 
Um, it's actually named after an African country. Apparently on the year of its creation it was a theme. That's according to the Hermes website. Um, and it, so it first appeared in 1997. So again, a, a a bit older once again. In terms of getting this grain, um, that is the result of um, an intensive drumming process to bring out the natural features of this leather, which is made from baby calf. So this is female leather. It has a, a very matte appearance. Um, more so than the country, um, it, it, yeah, you look at it and it's just, it's just flat in a really nice way. It has a matte appearance, it's lovely, it just kind of draws you into the detail of the grain when you look at it. Um, so it's got a round, irregular grain, um, veins and wrinkles can appear, sometimes visible, sometimes more pronounced than others. It's a very supple and responsive leather and it will soften over time. So yeah, a lot of bags that you'll find in this will be the Birkin, Kelly Tournay, the Kelly de Piches briefcase. Um, so yeah, it's a very, very popular leather. Um, I'm trying to see, like on this one, so on this Kelly, I don't notice looking at it, and I always thought this in the beginning, and I'm open to it, any veining at all. So there's no veining on this that I can see. Feel free to correct me if I think I'm wrong, because like I say, I'm not precious over it. I just really don't think there are any. Um, so that is in Gris Etan. And then going back to my Rose Pupre one. Now this does have some veining. So can you see there? We've got this. So that is a feature of the toga leather. You do get this veining. The veining on mine isn't very well pronounced, it's quite subtle. On some Togo bags it is um, much more pronounced. So, like I say, it's down to personal taste and personal preference very much. The next thing I was going to talk about is Terillion Clements. And I've got a couple of bags, and, well three bags in Terillion Clements. Um, but I just thought I'd show you this one, which is I chose gold because I've got gold with gold hardware. It's my Picatin 18 just because um, it's a really good example of the leather in this colour. And I thought I'll show you a bit of colour, let's show you a new, another neutral. Um, so you can see there the grain. So this leather um, is named in tribute to the daughter of the designer who introduced it. Um, the leather was mainly developed for luggage. Um, it's a grain leather that again has been drummed to soften the skin and bring out the, the grain to the surface. And this is made from baby bull. So we have male and female. So in terms of the, um, this is first appeared in 1992 and it's a semi-matte finish. Now looking at these together, I would definitely say that this is more matte and you can see there that there's more of a shine to this one than this one. So semi-matte, it's quite a generous and irregular grain and you can tell looking at them again compared to the Togo that the grain is bigger and flatter and that's often if you're trying to tell your leathers and you're looking at a bag, um, you know, Clements and Togo are two very very popular leathers so the chance of coming across a bag made out of those is quite great and yeah so the Clements as you can see there is a wider, flatter grain than the Togo. Can you see that? So that is the key difference there. Um, over time, this does become much more subtle. So compared to Togo, I'd say this is more supple. It will slouch more over time. It's a slightly heavier uh, leather as well. Um, it's fairly durable, um, but you, I have read that you do have to be careful this can blister with rain, apparently. So I think the Togo is probably a safer bet. But again, it is a lovely leather. And this example as well, this one that I've got in gold, um, compared to other ones that I've got as well, it's just, it's so soft, really sumptuous. So a beautiful leather. 
So next, I don't have a big example to show you in this, but um, Chev Mysore is the next leather that I want to talk to you about, which is actually one of my favourite leathers. Um, so I'm hoping in future I will have a bag to show you in, in that. Um, but Chev Mysore is actually a goat leather. It's from India and Mysore is the name of a southern Indian town where it does come from. So the grain on this, it does have a, a grain. I've got this Calvi here in Rose Etty, which I actually bought in Paris last time I went. Um, the grain is from the process of boarding. So again, an, another different process here. And that is actually rolling the leather against itself. I Grain against grain, either in a single direction or in several directions. It first appeared in the 1990s. Um, the grain is can be somewhat irregular. It's got a slight shine that reveals the natural features of the goat skin. And with time, this softens, becomes more supple than satiny. And um, it's a great leather. It's scratch resistant. It's lightweight. Again, I wouldn't want to get it wet, but it's not gonna blister in the rain. You can see there, you can see this real satin, shine to it and in Rose Etty it's it's beautiful. Now in terms of bags um, you can get the constants in this. You can if you are lucky enough to do an a la carte order then it's one of the leathers that is available as part of that. It's very often used on the SLGs. Um, like I said I've got it here in my Calvi and if I compare it to my Epsom Calvi you can just see the difference there. Very pronounced small grain. I say the grain on the mysore is less pronounced and like I say is a, is more of a natural finish to it. So yeah it, it's a great leather. Um, like I say holds its structure and lightweight and durable. I mean what more do you want? And they actually use it to be the lining on the Birkins and Kellys. So that's all my sort. So yeah, again, a leather that's very well used throughout Hermes on various different items. So next we have box calf leather. Well, what can I say? And I have a lovely, beautiful example of box leather here. This is my Kelly 32 Cellier in black box leather. She's so lovely. Um, so just hold her here whilst I tell you about box. So this was very much the original Hermes leather and I, for me anyway whenever I think of the Hermes Kelly I think either in 28 or 32 I think of this baby. Gold hardware, box leather, look at the shine. Um, so yeah it's still in production today but somewhat hard to get hold of um, items in this. I think they're starting to do some arounds in the box leather as well. Um, I've also seen like vintage Jiggy Clutch in it. Um, Kelly, someone I know from one of the Facebook groups did get a, recently get a Birkin 30 in box. So it's certainly in, still around in production, just uh, less common, hard to get hold of. Now, this is a very smooth finish. It's glossy, it's sophisticated. But you do need to look after it. It, it will patina over time. Um, also it will, apparently I've read it will blister um, in the rain, so I will be, if I ever take this out, making sure I pack inside a carrier bag, and I've got already got out a nice Harrods one because it's nice and durable, it hasn't got holes in it, um, so I will just, if I go somewhere, I will just keep that inside just in case, because I'd much rather walk around with a carrier bag inside my bag and I'm prepped than ruin my beautiful bag. Um, so yeah, so scratches and watermarks are easily noticeable on this. However, if you do get a scratch, it is one of those leathers that you can kind of try and buff it out of it. So there is, you know, there is hope. Um, and also, when you think about what's on the market, there are so many, well not so many, but there are, you know, vintage Kellys out there. There are vintage Kellys from the 60s, from the 70s, and you know, some earlier that you can find on the pre-love market. They've stood up pretty well. Mine is a more recent example. Um, but yeah, it's it's certainly no baby this one at all. 
so yeah a beautiful beautiful leather um i think very much one for the Hermes diehards um just you know really love that really love that whole Hermes heritage look so absolutely beautiful and then the final leather I'm on the final one now and i don't have a bag to show you in this um but i do have a bracelet. So that's Swift calfskin. So this was named after Jonathan Swift, the author of Gulliver's Travels. Um, and this actually did, there was a, there used to be a leather called Gulliver Leather um, by Hermes. Um, this first appeared in 2004 when they stopped making the Gulliver Leather. Um, again, Hermes say it is a supple and sophisticated leather. Um, it's almost smooth with a delicate shine. And it's got a lightly marked grain which Sometimes it's more noticeable than others. Sometimes it's hardly noticeable. Sometimes you can see it. And I can see it on this. I don't know if I can show you. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. So it has got a slight grain to it. Um, Swift leather, so this is calfskin. It will, it will mark. Um, it becomes more subtle over time. But it, it's got this real luminous quality to it. So this is in the colour Natta. So I should have said this is in the colour Natta, um, which I think is a beautiful colour with, with rose gold there. Um, it reflects like brilliantly, which means that colours can appear like much more radiant. Um, bags typically you see this in would be Constance, Kelly, the Ruli, uh, Jiggy, again bracelets, necklaces, um, the Calvi, you know, it's using SLG, so it's so using around. So Swift leather is, you know, on a lot of Items, so it's a popular leather. Like I say, it can mark. I think if you had like a large Birkin in this, you'd need to be careful, or just be relaxed about it. Um, either, either is you know down to you. <laughs> so yeah, it's it does hold leather the colour really, really well. Um, as does, well to be honest, I think a lot of them do. Um, Epson does. I think so does Togo. Yeah, and even if we look at the the neutral Togo. That's a really, that really has got its colour well. Um, you can tell how much I love this bag. But let's look at the rose poop Birkin as well. And, you know, there's certainly, that's certain, that's not fading in the background, that baby. So anyway, that is my guide to leathers from the ones that I have experience of and own. I don't have, you know, an exotic Birkin or Kelly to talk to you about. So I thought, let's not. Oh, you know, there's plenty of um, research, research avenues out there if you want to find out more but I just wanted to talk you through it and show you some examples. So any questions then do feel free to ask me in the comment box below. Um, check out my Instagram, you can see pictures of all of these, literally everything um, being worn and um, yeah there's also my email address if you didn't want to put a public question on there. Um, just see that from in the description box below. So do take care everybody and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye!